Hi everyone. Um, my name is Shashi Gowda. Um, this talk is about uh, a project I've been working on for a while. Yeah. Okay. This talk is about WebIO.jl, which is uh, a, a framework for building interactive uh, web widgets in Julia. Um, so, uh, a bit about the uh, current state of the display system for uh, showing anything on the in the browser. Right. So, so, this is just. <laughs> Does it work? Okay, can you guys see? Okay, so, uh, so the way it works right now is there is this show method which takes an I.O. object, and then a MIME type object, and then the type uh, object of a type T, and then it writes whatever uh, in, in the HTML form to the I.O. object. Uh, and then uh, a, a, a rendering front end like uh, iJulia can take that HTML and then show it on screen. So this is how, how it works. Um, so f an example is this type called HTML. It, it comes from the doc system in Julia. If you pass it uh, HTML, uh, it will uh, it will display it will display it when it gets returned from iJulia. Uh, as as you as you can see, there is a method to do that in the, in the display system. Um, and sure enough, uh, the method is this, and it's in base. Um, so this this uh, setup has some advantages. Uh, package authors can overload show to show, uh, to define how HTML should be shown. And uh, packages which show, which can show HTML can use this show method to uh, ask the package to render some HTML of the object. Um, there are some limitations. So the first limitation is this is basically static. Uh, it does not make assumptions about whether the front end can communicate to Julia or not. So um, uh, and then. Um, so uh, ca it can run JavaScript, uh, but to do that, to if you have any JavaScript dependencies, you actually splice it right into the HTML output. That's not good at all. Um, yeah, th this is um, so. Like I said, uh, not all front ends can talk to Julia in this setup. And it's not good for composability. So if I have an object and you have an object, how do I combine these two to together to form something uh, that can be displayed? Uh, right? that, that's the problem. So we need something that does not come with these limitations. So uh, we need something that, can, that will let us reliably load uh, third-party JavaScript dependencies. We need something that can uh, communicate with Julia and the front end. Um, um, and and, uh, and uh, if if your if your package does anything interactive, you have to you have to basically uh, write a different shim for for it to work on iJulia, and then Atom, and then Mux, and then uh, um, uh, Blink, right? So uh, can we have something better, which in which you write your widget once, and then it ha have it work in all of these frontends? Uh, so th these are the things that. WebIO tries to address. Um, at this point, I think I need to. Can you guys see this? Can everyone see this? OK. So the way you display stuff is by creating this uh, a DOM, it's 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 basically HTML with some variations. Uh, so there's this DOM string macro to which you give a tag, and it will form uh, this object which gets rendered as as the uh, uh, as the corresponding HTML, right? So um, you can already start building. So if if you do show on this, it will show you the structure of that object. Uh, that's this is the rendering of it in HTML. So um, you can already start building 
a uh, little abstractions on this and CSS util is a package which tries to do this so uh, so for example over here um, we uh, uh, we we are uh, using px uh, which is which is a, a length coming from the measures package and uh, we have defined how to render that in CSS util so you can already start playing with uh, different types of lengths and then you, uh, there is this uh, syntax for adding more styles to an existing element and then there, is, there are layout primitives like v, vbox and hbox which let you uh, lay out whatever object in this way um, and then uh, so th that's how you display some stuff now now Let's look at how you can load some, uh, you can run some JavaScript in this. So uh, WebIO, uh, has a WebIO uh, DOM nodes can, can take this uh, parameter called events. Um, and then events is basically a dictionary which, is, uh, which goes from event names to some JavaScript. Uh, and when you click, on this button, that JavaScript just gets run. So that's a very simple way of uh, interspersing JavaScript in your widgets, in your output, basically. Um, so there's also uh, loading JavaScript, uh, third-party JavaScript libraries reliably is a, is a, is a hard problem. Uh, so th as I said, right now, what we have to do is uh, basically read the whole JavaScript file, splice it into the output. Uh, if you're using show uh, show methods, uh, that is not good. So there is, uh, so the JavaScript world has kind of tried to solve this um, with many module systems and stuff. So WebIO can handle AMD and common JS module format, so you can load your uh, dependencies easily. Uh, so the the syntax for that is you have to create this thing called a widget. Oh, hold on. So, so as an example, I'm using this package, uh, uh, this uh, JavaScript library called P5. Um, it's it's like a modern uh, take on the processing framework, if you know about it. Um, so this is some JavaScript I found on their website. Uh, uh, it's it's for a widget which uh, continuously draws something. Um, so what I did is. Uh, I try to wrap this in, in uh, using WebIO. So the way you do that is you create a widget object and say that the dependency is a JavaScript file. Uh, so, and then you can you can use this at JS macro to write the same code that uh, same code above. Um, and if you put put that JavaScript function in the on dependencies, um, then when the dependencies are loaded, um, WebIO will execute it. So let's execute this and see what happens. So if, if, if an expression re returns anything that is a WebIO renderable, uh, Atom can render it in the plot pane. So um, as you can see, it also loaded the dependencies I wanted to. And uh, yeah, uh, this also works with Blink. So I can create a new Blink window and then run the body function. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, set the body as a WebIO renderable. And then if you see, uh, it showed up in the blink as well. Uh, apparently, I have one minute left. Um, so you can also do communication using this framework called observables. Um, so a simple example here, if you type over here, Julia is printing the uh, result. So how this works is, if you create an observable object, you can, what? I can't see the screen. Okay, you, you can set the observable uh, object using this syntax and then read the value with this one. Uh, so over here, what I'm doing is, I'm saying, f f when for the key up event, wh whenever there's a key up event, I'm saying, okay, set this observable to the value 
to my value and this value can be watched using the on method or on function and then um, you can call any arbitrary Julia function inside that um, so this is our communication from JavaScript to Julia works and then this is the other way uh, in which I am sending some Um, some uh, data to Julia. Julia is reversing that string and then it's displaying it using uh, this on JS handler. So if, if an observable updates, you can s run something on the JS side by using this on JS handler. Uh, so this is re displaying stairway to heaven backwards. Um, so you can also set an observable at any time and it just ups updates on the UI. Um, so I wanted to show how you could uh, use this in your package to um, you know, uh, show your types interactively. So one of the uh, examples I have is this LaTeX. It loads the KA tech library uh, by Khan Academy, and then it uh, calls the right uh, JavaScript functions to display it. Uh, you, can, you can have many instances of this because uh, each, instance is, e each instance works with a container div, uh, so that's fine. Uh, so uh, as you can see, when I return, uh, when I uh, call that function, it gets rendered like this. Uh, the next, uh, next package that I try to wrap is uh, Plotly. Uh, so here's a, here's a Plotly plot. Oh, hold on. I can't see at all. Um, uh, yeah, so here's a plotly plot, uh, just plotting hi uh, 10 random numbers. Um, now, uh, since you can do communication with J JavaScript, uh, I have this send method which will cause the plot to update with some new parameters. Um, now, now uh, we have extended. Uh, we have we have a way of showing LaTeX. We have a show of, uh, way of showing up Plotly, and now ca we can seamlessly compose this um, and put them in uh, say a H box, and then um, maybe uh, maybe. Um, align them in uh, center or whatever um, and then still be able to update it and then uh, so if if uh, packages which want to show interactive stuff depended on webio and then extended this one standardized webio.render function then we could have seamless composability with anything that can show interactive widgets um, uh, so Th uh, I am looking forward to uh, the GSOC project, um, uh, which uh, Joel Mason from Australia uh, is working on, which is porting Interact to this framework. Um, so the r final result of this will be that uh, you will have the same functionality as Interact right now, but it will start to work on all these different frontends like Atom and everything. Um, yeah, um, that's that's my talk. Thanks.